Hey, welcome to Tools on Tech. So this video is about ChangeLog 10.6 for LogSeq. It came out right when I was done recording 10.5, which was delayed because I was moving. But this is here now and I hope to get the next iterations in like closer towards the release. I'll be aiming at about three to four days after they uh, get out, if possible, depends a bit on how busy I am and they'll probably do a release right when I go on holiday next. So, you know, that's how it works. Let's get started, have a look at the change log. So we start off at the fix pasting YouTube links with timestamps. And what that means is that now if you have a video and you go like, this part is pretty cute. I can go to share, say start at the time marker there, copy it. And if I paste that into LogSeq, it will keep that timestamp in the end. And it used to cut that off. And what that means now is that if I play this, it will start at the point that I copy paste it. So really nice if you're trying to point to a specific part in a clip, less often used on my end because I usually would open it inside LogSeq and then start adding the uh, YouTube links under it. So while I was reviewing it, there's a thing here, YouTube timestamp. As you can see, it will add the timestamp and that makes the link. So I, I used to use that one more often, but it's really nice now that I can, you know, find a specific spot in a YouTube video and paste that straight into LogSeq. Next enhancement is the Git auto commit has been updated. Uh, one of the things that I really like is that it now does a commit when you're exiting LogSeq and the interval has changed. Now, for people that don't use Git very often, it means that it saves version over time. And it used to be that it was 10 minutes and the 10 minutes wasn't long enough, at least not for me. Some people like the fact that it saves like the changes happening every 10 minutes. But to me, it just meant that if I was looking at version control, I got like a whole bunch of versions and I couldn't find out where where the change was that I was having. I much more prefer longer time frames, like every two hours or maybe even every day, meaning that when I look back in history for a page, for example, I can see, okay, this page was changed on that date and on that date and on that date, and I can compare the differences between those two. So having a longer interval for me is a huge improvement. I also like the fact that it now auto saves when I close LogSeq, which means that if you're using Git as a sync solution, that means that the only thing that you have to think about is like closing LogSeq at the end. And if your Git has been configured to do stuff like auto push once a Git commit happens, that means closing LogSeq means that your nodes are in your central Git repository and you could use it as a sync back on the other hand. And if you're interested in a video about that, let me know and I'll do a whole video on how to use Git to do a sync solutions that outside the LogSeq sync. I'll need to do some debugging there to make sure it's stable, but I think it'd be an interesting take. This isn't so much the enhancement, but a more of a fix. And that was that after they made the change with Git, what happened is that uh, you couldn't go through the different versions. It would like auto close the panel as soon as you pick the version. That's a problem because in practice, you would go through the versions trying to figure out which the one you need, and then you want to use that one. So this restores that meaning that you can go through different versions of the file. Then we get to the support changing graph forces via the user interface, and this is a massive pull request on a graph. It fixes a lot of issues that people had with the graph. I have been looking at it, uh, reading through it, but my understanding, my usage of the graph isn't strong enough. I reached out to the person making the commit and asked if we could have a chat to help me understand the real use cases for graphs. And after I get that feedback, I'll probably do like a dedicated video on what graphs are, how the usages and how these forces really help out. Because at this point in time, I like the fact that I can use the forces to move things wider and smaller, but it still doesn't do much for me as an end user. And I just really want to understand because this graph is a very integral part of LogSeq. And then for some reason, I feel like I'm missing out. So hopefully next week I'll be having all the information to get more from it than like, ooh, this looks pretty and I can't open it because it takes like five minutes to open on LogSeq on my end because my graph is massive. And then the last is a couple of translations. So for Brazilian and Turkish. Then we get to the fixed issues. First one is publishing wasn't working. So since version 10.1, if you try to publish, if you want to publish your LogSeq graph towards the internet for everybody to see, then that part was broken. Of course, this is like huge for people that do use that functionality. Glad it got fixed, meaning that people can put their graphs for public viewing once again. Then we had a LogSeq sync crash on Android. Basically any pages with hashtag N and double quote N, my English is my first language, anyhow. 
a couple of these values in the title meant that sync would crash on Android. That of course being very, very bad. I didn't have any pages with that in the title, but you know, if it happens, then it happens and it needs to get fixed. Performance of search on mobile platforms. So I did a little digging into it, looking at the ticket. And one of the things here is that it's a trade-off. You want to have like fast searching. So you want to quickly go through the graph, but you also want it to be like grass a wide net. So there's a, it's not so much a fix. It doesn't instantly make everything. It does make it faster, but it means that you get quicker results, but the accuracy will be lower. So finding the right ones. And that's the, of course the balance. When I'm on mobile, I want to search quickly. Um, but if I don't find it right away, I might want to get to my desktop and start searching for it a bit more in depth. One thing though, when I was going through it, the original search time was like a minute and that's totally unacceptable for a mobile search if you want to try and find something on the go. Next one is the out then, then delete removing incorrect block. And what happened there very often is that if you had like an empty line and you try to remove it, it would result into the next line being deleted instead of the line itself. This one has been hitting me a lot and I just thought it was me fat fingering when I was typing. But what it does is like, if you, if you ever tried to remove empty lines and things started to go wonky this was the bug that's going to fix it so it should be much easier to now go to an empty line press backspace and just get it cleared out then the next fix is the wrong new page button clicking handling and graph view so if you go to the graph view inside logseek and you would hit the create new page button it wouldn't show up because it would stay in the graph view. Don't think it will hit a lot of people because most people will be doing new pages when they're in the journal, but still, you know, unexpected behavior, glad it got fixed. And last but not least, save composing text when clicking mobile bar buttons. So what this means is that if you click somewhere on your mobile phone and then you want to cycle through the to-dos, it exits edit mode and then the last changes you made didn't get saved. Um, this is like something that on mobile where you have like less control over entering and exiting sets, glad that they, they changed it so that it saves it regardless because you don't, you don't push like an escape button on mobile, you don't have an escape button. So, you know, glad this also got fixed. Now, while this release had a couple of big enhancements, it isn't a lot, so it's going to be a short video, but the thanks round. So Christian Elvia, M. Feneak, uh, really, Riley Brogan, Tyler Ho, Mustafa Ahangarha, <laughs> CNLHC, Linchu, Morgan Plain, and Kuiup. Thank you so much for helping improve LogSeek, something we use every day. That's it for this change log video. It's a short and sweet one. Remember, you're awesome, keep it up, and see you in the next one.